Hey, it's Kim Commando today, your daily podcast to keep you up to date with all things digital and beyond. And I'd love to have you be a part of our podcast. You can make an appointment to speak with me. Just head over to commando.com and on the top right, there's a button that says email Kim, fill that out and that's it. I always like to start with something fun and this is great news if you've cut the cable, but you also have an Amazon Fire Stick, maybe an Amazon Box or an Amazon TV because they just announced that over 400 free channels will be added in just a couple of months. You're going to get free local and national news. That's always a big question here on the show. Uh, Sports, travel, cooking, and these old TV shows, yes, like Perry Mason. Now, the catch is it's free, so what is it? You're so smart. Yes, commercials. Now, in case you want to check it out, just look for the free tab on your Fire Devices menu, and that's where you can set it up. Now, speaking of watching great shows, I am still waiting. I've been waiting for this for so long for the 4K Star Wars reboot where Yoda says HDMI. (laughs) <laughs> yes, I know. That was a that was a good one, too. I know it. And on that happy note, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Kim Commando, America's beloved digital goddess. And you have tapped into the nation's largest, most trusted source about all things digital. You can find our show in over 420 top stations across the United States. And in case you want to get the complete full experience, head over to commando.com and sign up for the community because you can watch us do the show. You can also get the show as a podcast commercial free, and it's just a few bucks a month, and it also has a 30-day free trial. So you can see if you love it, and I sure you will, head over to commando.com and sign up for the community. There's a yellow button in the upper right-hand corner. All right, get ready to level up your tech know-how, because in today's world, almost everything is considered tech. So whether you're tuning in for the first time or you're a returning listener, we're so excited to have you with us. And our T-Mobile Unlimited listener line is now open at one 888 825-5254. Once again, is the way to join us. I know you have a ton of questions about something digital, and I'd really love to help you out. So if you don't want to give me a call, just head over to the website in the upper right-hand corner. There's another button for you to pay attention to. It's the one that says Email Kim. All right, every single day I check out at least 30 different websites to make sure you're up to date with all things digital. And these are the top five things that you need to know. And starting with number one of five, something called Hot Chat 3000. Hmm, what's that? It's an AI dating website or a hookup website. I'm not really sure, but whatever it is, Hot Chat 3000 has to be the most superficial website in the history of the internet. So here's what their motto is. Hot Chat is where hot talks to hot and not talks to not. Okay, let me translate all this for you. You upload your photo. You better make it a good one. The website's artificial intelligence algorithm determines your so-called hotness. Then it randomly matches you with someone it rates as equally hot or not to chat with. Now, everyone's rated on a scale of 1 to 10 based on looks only. And yeah, Hot Chat 3000 also woke, meaning you may get paired to a male or a female. Now, one person told the Daily Mail that he upped his hotness by simply putting on sunglasses. There's an idea. Uh, The bottom line, if you're lonely enough and insecure enough to use this thing, your self-esteem is probably not going to improve when you see who your match was. So you might want to stay away from Hot Chat 3000. Hmm. Coming in at number two, the NYPD's answer to car theft. You know, there's been a surge in car theft all throughout the entire country because we have these viral Kia Boy videos. And these guys are showing people how to hack into older Kias and Hyundais using just a USB cable and a screwdriver. So even though people are saying take down these videos, they're still out there and they're still multiplying like rabbits. So here's where things get a little interesting. In New York City, the NYPD says that thefts where these cars have gone up 50% since these videos have gained all kinds of popularity. So what does the mayor do? He announces that the city is going to give out 500 Apple AirTags to residents to track their cars. Now, the catch is you have to let the police have permission to track your car in case it gets stolen. That's all because of New York has this anti-stalking law. So you got to let the thief know that they're being tracked. So what about Kia and Hyundai? What have they been doing since all these surges of the car thefts? Well, guess what? They have announced a major update. So if you have a Kia and you have a Hyundai, you have to make sure that you get this update. Contact your dealer right now. Okay. What the update does, it extends the length of the car alarm when the car is stolen. Really 
Is that the best you could do to make the car alarm go another 30 seconds? Jeez Louise. Uh, number three, let's talk about cars because, you know, your car is a computer. It has about 1,400 microchips on the inside. And because it's a car computer on wheels, what does that mean? Yes, you're so smart. Data tracking, a lot of data tracking. So this in from Vice News, there's a new tool out there that can tell you everything that your car is tracking about you. It's called the Vehicle Privacy Report Tool. And all you have to do is plug in your car's VIN number, and then it spits back all the privacy policies about your specific car. So here's what we did. We plugged in the VIN number of Maddie's Kia, and it spit down a full rundown. And here's what it has. Uh, Kia is known to collect locations, identifiers, and user profiles, and then Kia is going to share that <clears throat> and sell to affiliates, service providers, to the government. So in case you want to see what kind of data that your car is tracking, uh, head it over to vehiclepriva.com. Once again, that's vehiclepriva.com. If you miss that, we're going to have a story posted about it on the website commando.com earlier this week on Monday. So again, that's vehiclepriva.com, or just check the website on Monday. Uh, coming in at number four, Clippy. Yes, do you remember Clippy, that paperclip assistant that Microsoft would have bouncing across your screen? This time, Microsoft has come up with something truly amazing. I don't often say that, Microsoft, truly amazing. They have something coming out now called Copilot. And Copilot is just phenomenal. I mean, let's say you have a document on your screen and you look at it, it's all single spaced. And now you want certain parts of it to be double spaced or formatted or centered or whatever it may be. So now you have to highlight it. Then you have to go to the menu and select whatever option that you want. Complete nightmare, isn't it? Imagine if you could just say, Hey, Clippy, make the first two paragraphs double-spaced and center. Make the third and fourth paragraph single-spaced and to the right. Hey, can you put a picture of a tree right there in the middle? Yes, exactly. It works in Excel, too. Get rid of row six. Why don't you, instead of numbers in column seven, can you make them all percentages? Yeah, this is really something. They have thousands and thousands of commands. This is really going to change the way that we work. And again, it's called Microsoft Copilot. And last, this coming in at number five, the one person you want to talk to on Zoom, right? We're all tired of it. But here's the deal. A recent study conducted by BetterUp, an online coaching platform, they created this massive database of Zoom conversations to analyze how we interact with others on video chats. They found that the highest rated conversationalists had a few things in common. So you want to be an effective Zoom communicator, pay up, pay attention right now. They say that you speak faster, you vary your volume and go up and down so th and down by the softly so that people are really listening. That's what they do. They nod, they shake their heads more often, they mix up topics. They actually are more intense. But instead of feeling drained after these conversations across all age groups, people feel so happy speaking with them. So the next time you get on a Zoom meeting, act like a wild and crazy guy or gal. Shake your head. Be active. Be intense. And it reminds me of this joke. You're going to love this one. An Englishman, a Frenchman, a Spaniard, and a Dutchman are all on a Zoom call. And their boss asks, can you see me? And they respond, yes, says the Englishman. We, oui, says the Frenchman. The Spaniard says, see. Si. And the Dutchman says, ya. Yeah. So all together, it's yes. Yes, we oui, see si, ya. Yeah. <laughs> Good one, right? Yeah, I know. All right, coming up, in case you're going to be traveling, we have some great travel apps that you don't want to miss. And also, if you're going to be selling an old phone, factory resetting it just isn't good enough anymore. And we have more of your fantastic phone calls and me, Kim Commando. Hey, our T-Mobile Unlimited listener line is now open at one 825 5254 is the way to join us. And if you're not already, make sure that you get our free email newsletters. You're going to love them. They're all new and approved. Sign up right now at commando.com slash subscribe. That's commando.com slash subscribe. Okay, so we all know about the tooth fairy. Okay, and that's always a bit of a controversy. I mean, like, how much does the tooth fairy actually leave per tooth? And then there's somebody who's known as the tech fairy. Oh, of course. I mean, I'm America's beloved digital goddess. I love the tech fairy so much better than the tooth fairy. So I read this story about the tech fairy. His real name is Craig Clark. 
and he lives in Jacksonville, Florida. At the age of 58, after retiring, he decided to pursue a brand new career path, and he actually became an honest-to-goodness computer tech. Now, what's remarkable about Craig is what he's doing right now. It's such an inspirational story. Uh, so far, he's given away about 537 computers to 537 people. And just like the tooth fairy, the tech fairy never stops. Hey, Craig, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, so what inspired you to do this? It's, there's a couple of reasons. Number one, I have a complete inability to do nothing. Uh, <laughs> that doesn't have a challenge to it. I am really good at golf, and I'm really good at computers, and that's about it. Okay, I don't read books. I don't watch television. Uh, so I like to have something that I'm working on all the time. And... So when I became a computer technician, and I was always interested in computers, uh, we bought a Commodore 64 uh, back then, and uh, always played around with them. It, it wasn't my career at all, but uh, so I retired and, well, retired. I was asked to retire. Uh, and um, so I became a computer technician, and then I would go to someone's house, and I would sure. fix up their new computer and take their old one. And uh, for 27 years, I worked for 7-Eleven convenience stores in the corporate office, making really good money on the backs of people who weren't any different than me. Sure. And then this next door website opened up and through a burst of brilliance or insanity, I branded myself as the tech fairy and began to post <laughs> pictures of the people that I give computers to. And uh, some of the stories are really dramatic. And I would write those stories up and... People would say, well, uh, I've got three computers sitting on the desk uh, gathering dust. Uh, do you want them? So I would pick them up. And next thing you know, uh, I've got pictures of 537 people. It's just wow. it's just crazy. All the publicity that's happened in the last year is crazy, too. So what's, what's the most memorable computer that you gave away? The one that I got the most responses from ever was from an 11-year-old girl uh, who went by DJ and I go to the Goodwill store frequently because there I'm looking for people that don't have the money to go up to the Apple store. Right. Sure. And she was walking in uh, with a severe limp. Then I noticed uh, she had down syndrome. So I went up and talked to her dad and somehow I hopefully politically correctly said, can she use a computer? And he said, quote, that's the only thing she can do. Oh. And I was delighted to go help her. Uh, she had a stroke when she was 18 months old, really. I mean, I never heard of that. Um, so um, I had four or 500 people responded to that, you know, not with computers, of course, but just with comments. But I've got so many others. There's a, a girl that I love, Seneca Simon, that um, I had her. She was working at 7-Eleven where I mm -hmm. obviously paid attention when I walked in and she was really nice to a customer in front of me that was complaining. She handled it perfectly. I said, you did a really good job there, Seneca. Um, do you like working here? She said, I love working here. I said, but you're college age. Why aren't you in school? She said, well, I was in school, but somebody stole my laptop and I, I was taking online classes. And I had to drop out. Duh. That was right. easy for me. Uh, yesterday, I pick up a sandwich at Wawa, which you all don't have out west, but it's a big uh, convenience store chain that has beautiful food, sub, subs and stuff like that. And I see Kelly behind the counter, whom I'd given a computer to four or five months ago. Right. And I walk in and she says, oh, my God, I was just talking to David about you. I said, what? She said, yeah, uh, he's he's going to get, try to get his GED, and he wants to enroll in Man IT Tech College, and he doesn't have a laptop. And I told him, as the guy that comes in here occasionally that gives people laptops, he gave me one. And within two minutes of finishing that conversation, I walk in the door. <laughs> so so <laughs> five minutes later, he's in the front seat of my car, and I'm giving him a, a nice little HP laptop. Wow, that's amazing. So, I mean, that's that's just the way it works. It, it, it's it's well, it's crazy, and it really gives you that. I know for me, it gives me like this warmth inside yeah. that I was somehow able to give back. You know, when you put your head on the pillow at night and you look at yourself in in the mirror, you're like, you know what? That was really something good. 
people think I'm a lot better than I am, but at least on the next door app. And they say, oh, you're, you're really great. But I, yeah, I'm pretty good. Um, <laughs> uh, and the number one story is Nicole. Um, she was in the recovery program uh, down in Sarasota. Um, they've been there two years, recovering addict. Um, and she's brilliant. I mean, I just love this woman. Somehow she got a college degree when she was on drugs. 29 years old at the time. And I said, all right, Nicole, when you, when you graduate, and she graduated August 2nd of 21, I'll have a laptop and a printer for you. Well, that'd be great. Okay. Well, on July 23rd or something, like a week before, I get a call from one of my repair customers. It says, Craig, I know you work with people that, that are struggling and need help. Do you know anybody who could use a car? Wow. This woman had been in drug rehab for two years. And I said, yeah, I kind of do. It was a 2011 Mazda 3. She could have sold it for $10,000. And nope, she gave it to me. I gave it to Nicole. And she drove off to a new life. Uh, she enrolled in an ecumenical college. They paid her tuition. They, they hired her. And she had wow. to go. Yeah, that's, that's story number one. I just, I, I love Nicole. She just is fabulous on so many fronts. I, I think I think you're pretty fabulous yourself, you little tech fairy right. you. Thanks for joining us, Craig, and telling your story. And I'm sure it's been an inspiration to a lot of folks who are listening that, you know what, you, you can go out and you can make a difference in so many people's lives. And it's not just their life, as you said with Nicole. It's it's maybe it's it's the next generation too. And thanks mm-hmm. for being here. Yep. All mine. Hey, just want to tell you if you have an EV, Google Maps just rolled out some new ways that you can search for EV charging locations wherever you're located. Hey, stay right where you are. We have more tips, tricks, and secrets, and more of your fantastic phone calls that you can't afford to miss here on Kim Commando Today. All right, so I don't know if you've noticed, but I've been talking a lot about our free email newsletters. And my partner in crime and putting these all together is, of course, our amazing content queen at commando.com and here at the show, Ali Seligman. Hello there, Allie. Hi, Kim. We changed the newsletters? What do you mean? I didn't... Yeah, we did. I didn't know. Yeah. Um, oh, just, just kidding. Just a little, just a little bit. <laughs> just they a lot of just it. A, oh, my gosh. And listen to these numbers. Because okay. before you came on, I just went over to that site because we're asking all you guys and gals to rate the newsletters. Now... We have 19,814 thumbs ups. Whoa. Uh, 707 thumbs downs. Okay. So here are some of the comments. Christina says, uh, a lot of really good information today. Super interesting. Very informative. I'm going to share it with the folks at my job. Thank you for all you do. And also the silly puns. Oh, uh, thanks, thank Christina. You, Christina. Uh, let's see. Very good. No clickbait. Just reading. Great stuff. I liked hearing about the Kentucky Derby. Because, you know, we put some <laughs> current events in there as well. Yep. Uh, Bob says, Bob Metzger says, every day read, it's essential. Karen McDaniel Hamilton says, I always look forward to your uh, words of wisdom. And uh, this person didn't leave a name, says, I really love your new daily newsletter format. So clean, so fresh, so humorous. <gasps> Keep them coming. We're hilarious. You know, yes, we are just hilarious. Hilarious. So, uh, so the newsletters are a lot of work, aren't they? You could say that. Yes. And you know what? I bet a lot of people out there think, oh, Kim Commando is definitely not like writing these herself. She doesn't have time to do that. Oh, contraire, friend. Uh, No, (laughs) every single day uh, we are in there. Kim is in there changing things. Believe me, um, Kim's pun game is way above mine. So usually when you get one of those, like the big laugh or the big groan, that's Kim. Um, well, I liked yesterday when we put the thing about the uh, bourbon and, and whiskey, and you're like, I have no bourbon or whiskey jokes or Kentucky <laughs> Derby jokes. I just have nothing. Someone, please. And I just and, and then I sat there, I looked at it, and I said, okay, if you were on the whiskey diet, you'd lose seven days. <laughs> you know, and I was like, I'm like, okay, that's funny. That's funny. One- so, so tell everybody who is just too shy, maybe they don't like getting an email every single morning that's going to increase their tech know-how. Uh, tell them some things that they've been missing. You've missed a lot, pals. You need to get in there. One that is, I think, appeals to lots and lots of people right now, ways to save money, right? And one of those things, as someone who just booked a flight across the country, 
flights are expensive right now. How much should you spend? How much was it between Phoenix and New York? Oh, or almost York, a thousand Phoenix bucks York, for two. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I remember I used to live in New York and would fly back and forth. I remember when a, you know, one way or when a round trip for one person was 300 bucks. So it has, it's up there. It's up there right now. So how can you save some money on flights? We addressed that in the newsletter. One, there's a really cool new feature uh, if you use Google Flights. On some flights, not my New York flight, sadly, uh, they will guarantee the price. So that means if you book it through Google Flights, if the price goes up, they'll pay you back that money. That is pretty darn good. Nice. Uh, We've got some other tricks in there to save. Um, By the way, if you are always on like Kayak, Expedia, those kind of sites, don't book through there. Uh, Here's why. If you book through Google Flights, you're not going to face the same non-refundable stuff that you would using one of those third parties. annoying. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so annoying. Uh, And then then it's also a nightmare trying to change. Awful. Like, if you need to change your flight, it's like, oh, well, no, you can't really talk to the airline because you booked someplace else. Yeah, they – to them, you you basically don't exist. It's crazy. Um, A couple little pro tips for you. If you are booking a flight, the best way – the best day to do that – Sunday. And if you don't want your flight to get canceled or you, you know, you're, you're worried about, is this going to get delayed and delayed? Get the earliest flight you can. That is definitely what I did when I booked. Um, and I realized when I was booking this one, I don't think I'll ever do a red eye again. Nope. Not worth it. Uh, <laughs> you know what? It's, it's not. Uh-uh. So what time are you leaving at six? Or yeah. Seven? Early in the morning, but not so early that we're going to have to wake up in the middle of the night. Oh, yeah. that's good. Yeah. Because that's always super annoying. It is. That's crazy. All right. What else did they miss? Calendar tips. I loved these. We called them party tricks. Again, Google, because so many of us use it, our readers use it, Google calendar tricks. Uh, You can change all your events to different colors. If you are a visual person, maybe all of your work stuff is red, all of your personal stuff is green, whatever you want to do. There's a goals feature, which you taught me about, Kim. This is awesome, and I didn't know. Okay, it's May. Uh, Perhaps you forgot about your New Year's resolution to read 20 books this year. (laughs) Oops, it's not too late. You can get back to it. And this actually helps you schedule in time to do stuff you want to do, whether that's exercising, get in your steps, read a book, whatever it is. That is the goals feature. Uh, You can add attachments to your meetings. I don't know if everybody knows that. So if you are the person that's always like, oh, I forgot the agenda, sorry, or... I know I needed to talk about this, but I am now digging through my email and I look super disorganized. Oh, a hundred percent. Because you're always looking at it and you're like, okay, wait, I just need to get that. I need to get that deck. Yeah, exactly. So when you set the calendar invite, just attach it right there. It's so much easier. Uh, And one I love, I use this all the time. There are so many little shortcuts. Uh, Just type in cal.new if you have Google Calendar. You don't need to open the site. Uh, you can just it, do that and put in your own, you know, put in the whole event right there. It's so nice. And see, and it's not just tips. In the news, the morning edition, you actually are getting the latest tech news. One big story that you need to know about. Like, so, if, for example, these these scammy job sites mm-hmm. or uh, what's going on with chat GPT and, or what's happening within your car and is it actually tracking? So it's like it's this whole mishmash of stuff that you need to know to get that day started. We've got web snippets. Uh, we have by the numbers. And and I'm telling you, folks, I think this is by far. OK, I know this is going to sound crazy. <laughs> I think it's by far. I think it's the best email newsletter that is on the Internet. I'm I'm not kidding you. I mean, I really I really think this is something. And I was at a single de Mayo party uh, mm-hmm. last night. And uh, some people, they were coming up to me. This woman comes up to me, Anna, and she says, hi, Anna, if you're listening. Anna comes up to me and she goes, I am living the Kim Commando <laughs> life. And I said, what do you mean? She goes, I'm getting your <laughs> newsletter. She said, I'm listening to the podcast and I'm learning so dang much. I love that. Much. Thanks, okay? Anna. Love yeah. you, Anna. Thank you, Anna. And so I, what I did, I said, Anna, you need to tell everybody in your family. <laughs> okay? So she's like, okay. And of course, Joe is there. And Joe's like, I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part. Which leads us to this. If you are getting the newsletter, just tell three people about the newsletter. Just forward it off to them. Let's just forward it off to them. That's all. And if you want to be really great, what you do is wherever you're on social media, just say, I get this free email newsletter and you should get it too. 
and just put the address there, commando.com slash subscribe. Once again, that's commando.com slash subscribe, commando.com slash subscribe. Now, Allie, you have to go because you need to do Sunday's newsletter and Monday's, <laughs> okay, I know, it's a lot, isn't it? It is, but it's worth it stuff. because, you know, just seeing that feedback makes it totally worth it. And if there's anything you want to see in the newsletters, you can always just reply, let us know, and uh, we'll get that in yes, there. Yes, that's it. That's true because you can also reply yep. to the newsletters. And we want to hear your feedback. We want to know. Allie, great job as always. And I'll see you um, in a little bit when I get my head <laughs> in the newsletters. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for being here. All right, so you're about to hit the road on a summer vacation. So let's talk about some apps that you want to put on your phone to save those memories. Uh, first up is Day One. It's a journaling app that you can use for everyday life, but you can add photos, videos, and even record audio entries. Now, what if you're traveling all around Europe, London to Paris to Rome to Venice to Florence or wherever? That's where you want to use an app called Journey. It will keep all your memories separate, organized, along with those photos, videos, and maps. And finally, a great app is called One Second Every Day. That's all it does. It takes a video of a few seconds every day, and it's so fun to use on trips and also, actually, all year round. If you need links to these apps, we have them over at commando.com. Stay right where you are. We have more of your phone calls as well as later on. If you're getting rid of an old phone, you just cannot factory reset it anymore. You have to do some more work to make sure that your data is gone for good. I've got that coming up here on Kim Commando Today. Vince in Vero Beach, Florida. Hi, Kim. Enjoy listening to your show on Saturdays on the radio. And uh, we've got a little particular challenge in front of us, and we're hoping you could help us out. Okay. Uh, my family and I operate a uh, 501c3 whose focus is to uh, spread the gospel and as well as financial and food support to uh, orphans and underprivileged children in primarily focused in Jinji, Uganda right now. Okay. And That's we do great. a quarterly newsletter. Uh, we do a quarterly newsletter and we've struggled with it because we use a word product and it just seems like it's wrought with difficulties. Things bounce around and jump around. And so we're looking for a new application. We don't have a huge mailing uh, list. We've got probably 200 people, um, okay. but we're uh, looking for some that can handle pictures, that can handle text boxes, um, and that is user-friendly. I primarily do this on an iPad Pro. I certainly could use a laptop that I have if, if that was important, but uh, typically have used a iPad Pro for that. So when you say newsletter, is this something that you want to actually physically mail, or is this going to be delivered by email? By email, via okay. email. All right. Um, well, here's what you here's what you want to do with the 200 names. Is first of all, you're going to collect the 200 names that you have, and then there are email newsletter sending services. Uh, one is called uh -huh. Mailchimp, and the other one is called Constant Contact, and they both work the same way. And I'll tell you about the differences in just a sec. And so essentially, what you're going to do is sign up for a service, sign up for this service, and it's free up to 2,000 uh, different email addresses, right? And right. then you're going to pick a template, and then you can just import uh, your pictures, and it's just like dragging and dropping. So it'll say, like, put a picture here, and you're like, oh, okay, I got a picture of the kids in Uganda. That should be front and center. I'm going to put that right here. And it's then where's your text, and how do we – what what are some points that you want to get across, and here are some bullets. And so and so it gives you the, the basic format. That doesn't mean that you can't change it, Vince. If you wanted to put a picture in a different place – it gives you the option to do that. If you have a logo for your nonprofit, is that it tells you where to import that logo. So the whole idea is that you don't really have to design anything. You're just dragging and dropping, essentially, files from your computer and stuff that you want to just type into the newsletter onto the service. What's fabulous about it, Vince, is that unlike doing it in Microsoft Word and then trying to send it as an email, is that it will manage your email addresses for you. So if somebody has a different email address, it bounces back, they're going to be taken off the list. Uh, if, somebody uh -huh. wants to, if somebody wants to unsubscribe, is that you can, they have that option to unsubscribe at the bottom. If somebody sees your newsletter and they want to subscribe, then you can also have the option on your website or when you are uh, out and about, you could actually put on your, your business card how to subscribe to your newsletter, your free newsletter. And... Matter of fact, it doesn't have to be just quarterly because even if you have like a special announcement, 
you have now the latitude to do that without it within about 15, 20 minutes. I'm not kidding you. It doesn't take long at wow. all. And wow, that's the, awesome. The, yeah, the other beautiful thing about this is that when you're using these services is that you don't, you're, it's not up to you to figure out like, oh gosh, I hope it looks really good on an iPhone versus a Pixel phone versus a Galaxy tablet versus an iPad. Okay. Or, oh my gosh, I think it's going to look horrible on a desktop or on, uh, on some other type of device, even if they're watching it, reading it on their television. So it will handle all that's called responsiveness. Now, after you send the newsletter out, is that you get uh, instant results, data back. Who opened it? Who forwarded it? Uh, who, didn't, who got it but didn't open it? And so you can see how effective that your message is getting across. Make sense? Yeah, perfect. That sounds awesome. So is there a difference between MailChimp and Constant Contact, or you recommend one versus the other? Well, MailChimp is, I think, easier to use. And so I would start with MailChimp. Again, it's absolutely free up to 2000 If you find that those templates are not anything that you want to look at, and you're like, oh, I can't really find something that I need here, that's when I would go over to Constant Contact. Um, I've tried MailChimp a couple of times. <laughs> Uh, Rose recently, I don't know, probably events a couple of weeks ago when our sales folks said, you know, we want to get something out about the brand new newsletters and that we're selling ads in the newsletters. And I said, okay, so I actually did it, tried to do it in MailChimp. And then I'm like, oh, I didn't want, I'm going to waste too much time trying to find a template that I actually went over to Constant Contact and I found a template and it made it a lot easier. So if you're looking for a wider range of templates, then I would say go to Constant Contact. If you feel like I just going to get this message out and dirty, good to go, then I would say, you know, use MailChimp. But either one's really good, and it's just going to save you a whole bunch of time, effort, and energy. And Vince, thank you so much for your call. I'll tell you, using these email platforms like MailChimp and Constant Contact, it's so easy. And if you don't have email marketing for whatever business that you have, you're just totally missing out. So you just upgraded your phone. You want to trade in the old one to lighten that bill. But remember this, if you're looking to make some cash by selling your old phone, there are a few things that you need to do. Why? Because your old phone is like a mini computer. It has all kinds of sensitive information in there, like credit card numbers, bank account details, your passwords, private pictures. So you want to make sure all this info doesn't get into the wrong hands. Now, just hitting delete or doing a factory reset isn't going to cut it anymore because now we have advanced data recovery software that can still pry open all that secret info on your phone. So to really, truly erase your phone, you got to do a factory reset and follow it up with a thorough data erase. That means you have to use specialized software such as iShredder or Secure Eraser. It overwrites the entire phone storage with random data just multiple times. And this process makes it almost impossible for anyone to retrieve your personal data. Hey, if you laughed or learned just one thing, make sure that you tell three friends about the show and you can find me at commando.com. This program is a copyrighted production of Westar Multimedia Entertainment and protected by the copyright laws. Any rebroadcast or use of this program for commercial, business, economic, or financial purposes without the written permission of Westar Multimedia Entertainment is strictly prohibited.